Hi and welcome to the Virtual Studio tutorial video in Vimcast. Okay, today we're going to talk about Virtual Studios and how we create them in Vimcast Studio or in Vimcast Solo for that matter. Up here on the left hand side we've got three options for three different virtual sets. Set 1, Set 2 and Set 3. Each of these can be put into the preview, put into the program. They have a zoom in uh, facility and a pan facility. So let's start by creating our first virtual set. To create a virtual set, the first thing you do is you put your mouse over the set number. In this case, I want to create virtual set one. So I'm going to left double click and it'll open up a window for me. Here I've got the option of click clicking setback image, which I'm going to use an image, just an image of a virtual set as my base to work onto. So, for example, I will take you know, this image here. Okay. So this is going to be my virtual set. And for a specific reason, I chose this one. Really got to do with this area on the wall. I want to replace this painting, what we call a virtual screen. So, how do we do this? Well, we've got an option here of new layers. And in here, we've got a couple of layer choices. We can add camera 1, 2, 3 and 4 as the layer, or rather video inputs 1 to 4, players 1 and players 2, an image, some text and virtual screens. There's four virtual screens. Each screen can have an independent image or footage, video footage. You can put in screen 1 as many times as you choose, the same with screen 2, 3 and 4. Or you can put in all screens. And then we have a back image. The back image I'll explain later. We'll get to that one. But for now, we're just going to pick uh, a virtual screen. And I pick virtual screen one. So with this virtual screen, I'd like to cover this painting that's on the wall. Let's stretch it out a bit like this. Maybe a little less in height. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we've got a we've 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 kind of got a problem. And the problem that we have here is, that's well, not a problem, but it doesn't look right. It's not really three dimensional. The monitor looks like it's facing at this angle. You could have a monitor facing at that angle, but it's not really what I want to achieve. What I want to achieve is a monitor in the exact position where the painting was, looking in this direction, not this direction. So how do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. On this monitor, we right click and we move to the menu and we click trackball. When we click trackball, it gives us a full axis of movement. So for example, I can push in like this, tilt it this way, this way, all directions, I can tilt it. And you can see what's happening straight away. I'm getting very quickly what I want to achieve. I'll go back to my move and resize. And there we go. Maybe a bit more on the trackball just to tuck that back a little bit like so there you go perfectly fitted in the direction I want this to be now I just want to highlight there when I go back onto move and resize you can see it's green when I run the mouse over it allows me to catch on any of the four angles the top the left the right and the bottom sometimes the green all depending on the back image you're using as your virtual set um, it might be difficult to see. Well, you can change that if you prefer a different color or something you think is going to be easier to see as you work with it. Uh, maybe in this background, white would be a better color. And now when I run the mouse over it, it's white in color. Just a nice little option in there for anyone who needs to use it. Now, I want to add another 
oh sorry not a back image I want to add another layer this time I just want to put in maybe a small bit of text just to demonstrate using text I've set it in I've maybe bold normal on the font mm. I'm not sure let's try this bell empty and the color for the font I'm going to choose is maybe just white and we click OK so you can see straight away it gives me add text here and this specific text uh, I didn't I didn't choose anything I left it at add text here by default because I want to start going up here and explaining about a few buttons because you can see a pattern being created here well, these are layers and in the layers we have a couple of options we can turn them on and off from a viewpoint of view uh, by default whatever layer we've added most recently it becomes the layer to move around and resize and use the trackball with however I may want to go back and do something with this layer so by simply clicking on the screen the virtual screen in the move this is the move icon you can see the text for it here now this one becomes highlighted and this one allows me to move around and resize and reshape and this one is static so to speak and again if I want to do something with the text I click on the move button for the text and again we can do something with the text the view button I've already explained which is just simply on and off we've got edit to edit the specific um, description related to it because screen one is okay for now but when I add a few more screens it may not be so we may say I don't know screen center and maybe for the text we can call it something like logo well, I'm not sure okay so when we right click the text unlike the monitors or on the, unlike the virtual screen we have an additional menu and it's called edit text because I don't want to have add text here I want to have something like news as an example and again again you can see it's kind of it's, it's the angle is not correct of it so with the trackball did I do the trackball there sorry we can just move it around like so move it in it's going to make it uh, a little bit more wider for me okay and go back to the trackball that's a little better okay I mean I don't want to use the news but it's just again to demonstrate a bit of text on it uh, so again if I click on this uh, on this one you can see this becomes the edit for now now other buttons we have here is auto sizing we had this feature before and I'm going to do it on the text because I'm going to delete the text so it's not really relevant so on the default text we have a width of 300 and a height of 250 you can change these values we have a position of 50 on the screen uh, which is the X position which is from this side the left inwards and the Y position is from the top downwards so it's 50 by 50 so it's probably going to be somewhere around here so on the text if I just simply click this button it auto resizes to those dimensions 300 by 300 and it's gone to position 50 by 50 so sometimes you may be putting uh, something where you know the values of the size you want and the location and it may be quicker just to type them in and click that button and this button here is the delete button and that one I'm going to click it and we simply delete and we're back to one layer okay I'm going to have a second uh, virtual screen I'll call this one virtual screen 2 
Um, I want to put it down here because I want to demonstrate putting it onto the wall down below. Like so. Maybe just a little bit too wide there. Okay, so I can put it onto the back wall. And uh, again, it's just a little bit too wide. And then we'll start pulling it out with the trackball. Like so. Okay. Again, this is a good wall to look at because I want it to face down this way. That's what I'm looking to achieve. And again, I can go back to my move and resize and I can move it slightly to the right now. Okay, so that's the two monitors. And again, I can give a description for this and maybe screen back wall, something like that. However, you could give a more description like screen two, screen two back wall if you prefer. But we can see it's screen one here and we can see this one is screen two. But sometimes, especially in another section I'm going to show you, um, we may want to identify very quickly what screen is what, especially if we've got two screen twos or three screen ones. We've got an ident button up here and when we click it, it simply shows us what the screen number is, the virtual screen. Screen one, screen two. And off we go. Now, I'm going to uh, work on this specific one by adding in an image as a layer. And I want to add in uh, a podium. And I've got one here. And bring it down. A bit small maybe. And make it a bit wider. And a bit longer. There we go. Maybe small bit longer again. No, it's too long maybe. Something like that. And I'll just put it here on the edge of this floor. Okay. So uh, the image is a podium, so we better remind ourselves what this is. And we just change it to the word podium. Now, I want to take a video footage. So player one is Rhonda from green screen and I just want to remove the green from that just put it up here so I can see it a bit better and just by moving the, the gain down there is sufficient for what I want and go back to videos okay so I want to go back to the virtual set and I want to add in player one there we go And now we're going to run the on the podium or behind us. Something like that. Maybe a bit more in the width. Don't know, seems a little bit high. For what I'm trying to achieve. Maybe something like that. Okay. So I want uh, let's change the name here from Video Player 1 to Rhonda. Okay. This is just so I don't get mixed up and I can quickly look up and see what's what without really looking at the layer type. Because here Player 1 is the layer type. This layer type is Player 1. We can have Player 1 several times. And the other layer type is an image and we have two screen layers, Screen 1 and Screen 2. But I, I really need Rhonda behind the podium, um, not in front of it. So I have two options. I can move Rhonda up behind, like so. And here we can see the podium, podium is highlighted, but I want to move Rhonda. So I click on Rhonda, like player one, and I can just bring her up, like so. And again, and just make it a little smaller seems a bit too tall there 
Okay. And you can see because she selected, we don't need to move the podium. We can just move her around and around and around. Now as equally, we could have done the opposite way. We can move back. We could have moved the image in front of the podium or round it in front of us or behind. So whatever way you move the layer, it goes behind us. And the lower the layer is, the more in front it is or the nearer to us it is in a Z order. Okay. So let's close that down for now. And let's put our virtual set one up here where we can all have a little look at it and see it a bit better. Uh, video footage. Okay, so we can go to screen, our virtual screens. Remember the virtual screens up here that we put into the virtual studio or the virtual sets. We can use the identify button here and we can see screen one and two. And we can also select what we want to put onto the screens. So we could say video footage and player two. And do I have an image and graphics? I have this image and graphics. Uh, back to virtual screens and on screen two, I'll put in that virtual image. Oh, sorry, image one. There we go. And we can roll that footage, player two, just to make sure I have the volume down for that. I do. So it doesn't blast all over me. So we can start rolling that. And we can start rolling the footage for Rhonda. Hi, I'm Rhonda from FinCast. FinCast Studio is one of the most professional video production and broadcasting enough. softwares on the market. It has four video inputs for cameras of Quite other devices. Bit. With virtual studios, you can okay. do this. So that's pretty much how you can create a virtual screen. And this. Or a virtual set, I beg your pardon, in FinCast either version. Of, Lower thirds on the uh, fly, box and studio, box, video Fincast switching solo. with 32 transitions, and, and the difference so is much more. Is three sets. Visit our website for um, full information, www.fincast.com. Okay, so Thank you for watching. I'm just going to Bye stop now. that. It's going to stop itself anyway. And I just want to go back to the virtual sets, and we can see we can also have the same footage on both virtual screens, one and two. So this is kind of like a switcher in a switcher. It allows us to switch specific items or devices or inputs onto our virtual screens. And in this case, we can have cameras one to four, players one and two, images one and two in the graphics. We can have multicam view. We can have box, which is this guy up here. You can see a tutorial video on box. And then the virtual sets one, two and three and the back screen so I want to uh, now just go back into uh, a, a virtual sets again so we're going to leave this one alone and I'm just going to stop this other video footage for now and we can bring that back to the beginning so I'm going to open up virtual set two and create it now I did say earlier on in the layers I was going to explain about the back image so what we used the last time was literally an image of a virtual set so it's kind of more like a studio and a virtual set can be of a studio it can be of a lecture room it can be of a church it can pretty much be of anything you want and you create it exactly like I have shown you previously there are also available out there images to have specific transparent or masked parts to it to allow you to do more and i'm going to demonstrate that by choosing one now so in such case you don't select the back image set the back image for your virtual set you choose instead back image and i'm going to pick, pick this specific uh, virtual set and that has in part of the set two monitors and nothing to do with the virtual screens where well, you can see two monitors now 
also all these windows are masked so you can put outside footage behind us or some sort of scenery actually I know what we can do so let's start with uh, adding a virtual screen again virtual screen one because it's the same footage because we have it on us and we want to have it in here so we can just roughly do something like this if we need to use the trackball we will okay like so well we don't even need to properly use the trackball in this case and I'll tell you why because in this case if we actually put the virtual screen in front of the back image it goes behind us and it comes to the mask now we can still resize it it's not an issue we can just tuck it in if it's sticking out anywhere you can see it there but it is automatically behind this image now and fits absolutely perfect into it let's run a uh, virtual screen too and do the exact same with this so again we can roughly just stretch it out to the size we want again you may need to use the trackball even using such back images on, on virtual sets because it still may not look completely right in this case it actually does because yeah it doesn't really need any trackball movement I don't think so and again if we move this screen up in front of the back image if it's nicely in and we can see the frame just like this one of our monitors in the virtual set now let's choose an image maybe take hmm, I don't know this back image doesn't really seem great a great choice um, but we'll try it anyway just as an example it's not something I'm sure we'd be looking for something more appropriate outside so again what I'm going to do I'm just going to make this nice and big like so and I'm going to start tucking it in on the tracker ball let's push it in there there we go bit more in okay so I want this to be outside the window not the inside the window so once again I take my image and I move it up in front of the back image and there we have it outside the window I'm sure you use more appropriate picture like a, an image of something outside like the street or nature but it again it's just to demonstrate uh, the Pacific areas here in this sort of virtual set so this virtual set uh, is one of the virtual sets from uh, virtualsets.com uh, they've been very kind to uh, present it to ourselves uh, in FinCast and we were happy to use it in the demonstration and it's one of many that they have but again to emphasize just a simple image without any masking as I've demonstrated can be used as a virtual set now you may be looking here and saying oh your monitor is not showing correctly here no it's not and again this has got to do with the positioning of your layers so what we need to do is just keep moving up everything behind so to speak and because we brought this image all the way up to the top now we our monitor uh, is positioned correctly we can see it correctly so again it's a layer system and we can turn on and we can turn off as we please which is handy okay and the final thing on virtual sets it's simple but you know it's it's something that may be overlooked a lot of people use backdrops as well as virtual sets 
and using the very or uh, using a sorry a backdrop is very straightforward in Fincast. Just select the back image. We'll just take this as a backdrop. Actually, no, we'll take the weather eating, even though it kind of looks like a virtual set. So whatever the images you want to use as a backdrop, it could be a picture of a city outside, or you've seen it many times on TV. Well, there's a slight advantage in Fincast than most backdrop systems. Most backdrop systems, you put in your chroma keyed subject on a live camera, and I'm using video today, uh, rather than somebody having to stand here all the time. So again, we'll use player one, but it's as equally works with, uh, a live camera so most times when you add it in you're kind of stuck with a specific size of the subject and they usually look really big with a backdrop behind them which works well and it's been used for many years in the tv industry but the advantage in fincast is you can resize the subject because sometimes they just appear to be really big and the backdrop just stands out too much being a backdrop And we could put it here, something like that. So you get the idea. So again, the virtual set can also have a backdrop behind it. Because the whole principle of what I've shown you here today is a virtual set with no mask and transparent areas. And then a virtual set with masked transparent areas, specifically designed for those who want to have kind of a positioned in monitor whatever however air virtual screens does kind of correct that issue and is a little faster um, requires less imaging to create the same purpose as we can see here in this specific virtual set so and then our final one as we demonstrated was just simply like a backdrop and that's all it is look even be an image behind now, one final thing I want to do. I want to go back to this specific one and in the virtual sets, I want to click on the tab called sets. This is clickable for virtual sets one, two and three. And video inputs or cameras, one, two, three and four. And I will click on set one. And this is the set I want. Here we can zoom in and pan to wherever we want on this specific set. So for example, I'm going to zoom in just on the top of uh, the chest there on Rhonda because this is, um, and maybe, I don't know, I'll try to 60% because I haven't rehearsed this so I can't honestly tell you how far I'm going to go in. And I'm going to do that in maybe 10 seconds. Now on my keyboard, I'm going to click the plus key and it should start zooming in there at that speed in around the area where I've clicked give or take it has the minus key will bring it back out now I zoomed in too much there or not necessarily too much too low it can be either way so this time I'm going to pipe my mouse more on a forehead with a click and zoom back in and there you can see it's kind of much better a little bit over chroma keyed on that one just bring that back a little bit oh sorry not enough chroma keys okay um, so back to sets now I'm going to zoom out again so this is the percentage of how far you zoom in and this is the speed of how you zoom in and zoom out where you click is your pan so for example if I want to zoom in on this monitor down here like so I'm going to run the video footage while I do that and maybe go more than 60% maybe 70 let's zoom in so you can see we're heading down to that direction of where I clicked in. Okay, 70 brought me up very closely, but I, 
I wanted to get a little bit more. Okay, let's try the monitor at 70 and see what happens. It'll be just faster. So over here on this wall, I'm going to click this monitor right in the center. And then I'm going to click zoom in. Yeah, okay. So we got right in on that with a nice zoom. It actually looks like the video player itself. I'm going to zoom back out. Now this is very good for angle movement on the subject. So a lot of people will have like a left drawing of a virtual set, a center and a right to give the effects of camera, a camera on the left, a camera on the center and a camera on the right. We don't have to do that. I mean, here we can, let's say, put it down maybe at 40. I'm not sure. 46, see, let's, let's see what happens. And I'm going to click slightly here on the left, about, about here. What I'm trying to achieve here is, okay, it's too much. So I'll zoom back out. And I'll put it maybe at 30%. Okay, 31%. And I'll zoom a little bit closer to Rhonda about here but I want I wanted to look, make it look like oh sorry it's a camera I hit the wrong button there it happens <laughs> okay as I'll zoom in this time okay maybe a little higher is what we want to achieve here so what I want to do I want to give the illusion of camera one on the left hand side is now on Rhonda. So I've gone a bit higher here. You can see where I click where the mouse is. Let's zoom in and see what that looks like. There you go. Okay, so it looks like she's being picked up by a camera on the left, camera one. And this. Okay. Lower thirds on the fly, box in box. Now I want Video to do, switching with 32. Let's zoom back out. Transitions and so there. much One more. Mistake. Visit our website um, for full information. Actually, I'll just go back a bit. Start that again. Hi, I'm Rhonda from FinCast. Yeah. FinCast Studio back to my is one of the most professional video production and broadcasting out. softwares on the market. It has four video inputs for cameras of Probably other devices. Get this done. With virtual studios, uh, you can speaking. do this. But now I want to fly over and I want to do the opposite. I want to make it look and like this. a camera on the right hand side is picking her up and that's what she's and looking this. into. Lower thirds on the fly, box in box, video switching with 32 transitions okay. and so much more. Visit our website more sense, for but you full get information, www.fincast.com. Thank you for watching. Bye now. Now the zoom in and zoom out can be done pretty much with any of the virtual sets and any of the four cameras. So the, luckily the cameras have uh, the same themselves. So if I go to set two, for example, and I click up onto the top of this ceiling or roof maybe, and I click zoom in, I want to go more than 30% for that, say 77%. You can see we're zooming up, uh, sorry I, I, I didn't click enough there, let us zoom back out. But where you click on the mouse is where you're aiming to zoom into. So here I just go up really high and I click with my mouse. Okay, and I've hit the plus key. So here you can see I'm zooming right up into the uh, the roof or the ceiling of this studio. And I have to say, that's a very good drawing of that. And I'll zoom back out. So it's through pan and zoom. And this allows you to have really good scope, especially in a live event when somebody's uh, presenting a program or whatever. 
by going back to virtual set one we can again do a center shot 77 percent is way too much here say so maybe we zoom in uh 29 percent and make it a bit slower go in at 15 seconds let's see can we get a bit of video footage rolling again hi i'm and rana from sets. fincast Thinkcast Studio is one of the most professional you see now video nice production and, and broadcasting softwares on the market. It has four video inputs for cameras really and other devices. With Virtual Camera Studios, in you can do this. Okay. And this. So that pretty much covers the demonstration video. And this. On Lower third on sets. the fly, box in box. And you can see it's very, very powerful in Fincast extremely powerful what you can do with it. In some cases you may need the three sets. You may have one for a specific studio, it could be somebody presenting a program, somebody else might be going to do a weather report. It's endless really. You may want to bring someone in on a backdrop. Again, I demonstrated that in set three. But the whole principle, which is very important to remember when it comes to Fincast, you don't need all these mountains of specific specialized drawings or specialized videos to create a virtual screen. You can have an image of a virtual set, of a church, of a lecture hall, even outside, and put your subject in and place them wherever you want to. It's very, very simplistic and it's very powerful. So again, thank you for watching our website, fincast.com for more information on where you can buy our products. Thank you, bye now.